Hey guys, welcome to Conversations. My name is John Thomas. If you watched our last video, you already met him, but just in case you missed it, this is Robin from South Africa. Yeah. This is Charity from Scotland. This is Andrea from Coeur d'Alene. And we are here in the streams offices because they're going to be teaching a limitless course this weekend. By the time you see this video, it's already done, but you can always watch it online. It's a course that Charity wrote, which is so important, I believe, for the body of Christ right now, mm -hmm. because it's helping to release creative intelligence and helping us to reimagine life and reimagine church with God so that we can see our world transformed. We desperately, desperately need that. So we're going to have a conversation today about how to submit our giftings to creativity and how to get out of ruts so that we can experience all that God has for us. Um, but we could go anywhere with that. But on our last conversation, we were talking about uh, one of the questions I asked you, and you, you started talking about this need for practice yeah. And this need for excellence so that it's easier to submit our creativity yeah. to that prophetic flow. And I can remember having conversations with John Paul, what yeah. he called practice spontaneity. Yeah. Where you would get so mm -hmm. practiced that it would be easy to be spontaneous. For sure. And you could just, you know, like you were talking about instruments. You, you get to the point where you can play well enough that you don't have to think about your chords. You can actually think about what God is doing and how to respond to it. So how, how does that, I mean, how does that look? One, you, you have in, instruments, music, but give, give us some other examples, other areas of your life. So uh, a very recent area that God has really begun to speak to me about was um, my photography. So I also do photography. I, 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 I studied a course and, you know, I did the, the standard run of the mill photograph a wedding, photograph a family, photograph some cute babies. And I, 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 I was good at it, but there was this something that was always just, I knew that there was something more. And fact, actually at the beginning of the year, I began to really seek God. I said, God, I am, I am creative in all of these areas. And I actually wrote them down and I, I, I got this huge, um, cork board. I, don't know, I hope it's a cork board in the States. That's what it's like is yes, in South it Africa. Is. And I took push pins and I stuck them all over this board. And I felt like God said to me, have these things always before you. So it's in my office. I see it every day. And it would always become a point of prayer because I knew that even though you can be uh, skilled and not necessarily skilled in artistic ways like painting or drawing, or you can be skilled in your work. But all of those things needed to be submitted to the Spirit of God in a new way because there was creative potential in all of those things that I knew I wasn't tapping into in its fullness. And I thought God would speak to me about the worship stuff that I was doing or about the painting. I, it was very unexpected that God began to speak to me about my photography. And I was out walking one day and I had this picture of a, a photograph of something in nature that was printed on fine art paper so that the photograph would look like a piece of art and that, and then God would give me the names for all of them. So they all have very specific names and meanings. And I prayed over them and, you know, some of them would be words that I didn't even use in my everyday in like vocabulary. And I'd have to go and Google what the word meant. And I was like, well, Lord, obviously you're going to give me words that I don't even understand. But I began to see that there was a whole untapped well in something that I thought was, oh, I already know how this works. And so it's a, it's, I'm very much like in the middle of that journey right now, but God really began to show me that just listen to the whisper, mm. just respond. And it was about stewarding the little. So even mm. sometimes, you know, I would go to bed at night and as my head hit the pillow, like a name, a name for one of the pictures would pop through my head and it would be very easy to dismiss because I was about to go to sleep. It would be late at night. I'd be tired. And God said to me, steward the whisper, even in those environments, and then more yeah. will be given. Come so, you know, on, so I'd have good. a diary next to my bed or a little journal, or I'd pick up my phone and I'd everything, you know, whether it's a book title, and I'm not writing a book currently, but if God says this is a name for a book, I write it down. When it's a line for a worship song, I write it down. Because I, I know that if I do something with that, that I can't really, I can't really piece together what it's supposed to look like. 
but I'm being faithful and I'm responding when God is even showing me uh, the hint and the whisper of what the greater thing will look like. Yeah. And I think that's a great place to start. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you that, that phrase being faithful in the little, yeah. like that is such an important principle in the spirit that we often miss. We, we think that, Oh, I've been asking. And so when it's the big thing, I'll do it. Exactly. But the reality exactly. is if we don't do it when it's the little thing, you we don't see the big thing coming. Anything. You just, yeah. you really don't. And I think I, I, I spent years stuck in a lot of these things and I, you know, frustrated and cause you kind of have the sense of the big thing. If you're mm -hmm. prophetic and if you, if you are sensitive to things in the spirit, you kind of know that there's something there. And if you fixate on that, you miss the little things and you never end up getting there. You don't make headway. You don't move in the right direction. And in the last two years, I've been very, very intentional. It's again, that thing of being, being focused and knowing that this that's in front of me right now, even though it doesn't look like it's going to link to that, I know it will. Mm -hmm. And then the hints and the whispers, you can kind of see the line as God begins to track you in that direction. So it's been powerful. And I've seen great fruit already just by being obedient and being consistently obedient. Yeah. You know, just keep on, keep on keeping on. And in, in, in a lot of Christian circles, you hear that a lot. But if you do it, changes oh, it changes everything. It changes so everything. That's good. That's mm. so good. How about you guys? Um, well, I, I agree with everything that Robin has just said. Uh, that's the very scripture that God gave me at the start of um, the kind of breadcrumb trail for following the creativity of the spirit, just be faithful in that which is least. Even when um, I began to lead prophetic evangelism teams, you know, when you've got two people, God <laughs> yeah. would just, you're packing all the boxes and you know, you're, you're doing all the practical stuff. He said, just for years, be faithful in that which is, which is least and I will keep giving you yeah. more. And he really has. And then what I found is that, um, the way that God has communicated creativity to me has increased in particularly in supernatural encounters, mm -hmm. particularly the ability to see, to hear, to experience something in the spirit realm that I then am literally, you know, pooling out onto the earth into some tangible form. And even the diversity of what that has been has, has grown significantly from the things I was trained in right to writing a book and a course and now I'm deep and it seems writing not a book but a trilogy you know it expands um in ways that I'm not skilled to do I'm not trained to do I would never have chosen to do even mm -hmm. you know even with the books they they didn't come as a whisper anymore they came as an angelic encounter yeah. and it was so clear and so in my face you wouldn't actually want to disobey and so it's a fascinating journey yeah that um is absolutely full of adventures and the reality of the spirit realm becoming more and more tangible. Yeah. As you really believe that, you know, there's this amazing realm of heaven full of incredible things. And God really does want to co-create with us yeah. to give us pieces, yeah. but he doesn't just want to use us to do something on the earth like Bezalel, you know, for the tabernacle pattern and the team, he wants us to co-create with him, to speak to us through the whole process, not just the idea at the beginning, but that do this, you know, have you tried that? Go left, yeah. go right, buy this material, not that one. And, and it, what it does is it pulls us closer to the Lord mm -hmm. because yeah. it's a friendship. It's a growing relationship, not just an instruction, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it becomes more and more powerful and more and more personal. And, uh, and just then you watch its, its impact, what you have co-created. You have no idea the impact it will have for others. But that, of course, is the commission. How will this change, you know, someone's life? How will it change something on the earth? Um, and then it's an amazing journey to see how people respond. You know, I've seen people stand in front of paintings and weep and nobody's laying hands on them mm -hmm. yeah but they're being healed by what's in the painting or the sculpture or you know i've heard testimonies now of business plans that were given by the lord co-created mm -hmm. with the person but the effect they're having on the on the people that are um, experiencing the result of that business plan is or that idea for government or the idea in science 
is just groundbreaking. Yeah. And I think that's what we're, what the enemy's gone hard after because it's so powerful when you rediscover it. And it, I really believe it's the most powerful way we're going to touch culture. Yeah. In this every yeah. sphere of culture with these ideas. It almost seems like, I mean, just kind of reading behind the lines, a couple of things that you said, mm. it almost seems like there's this tension between imagining to come up with a creative idea mm. versus waiting until God gives you inspiration. It, it's mm. it's almost like those are, are two, two opposite ends of the spectrum yeah. and neither one are true, even though they're both true. Yeah. Yeah. And there's a, like an interplay between them. There's this place of relationship yeah. that it is, is kind of an interplay between them that's really important. They need to kind of land, I think, it, like in the right place. And I think this is where all my design and artistic training has really helped me have more of a clear grid because I was trained, a bulk of my training was before I was saved, some was after, but then all this kind of revelation about imagination versus the restoration of creativity mm. came later. Yeah. And so unlike perhaps uh, the majority of Christians, not everybody's gone to art college, design college. Mm. So imagination for people like me comes in through that whole door of our training. And then when it became you know, God taught me it needs sanctified. It needs cleaned up. He taught me that really early on when mm. I was saved. Then in this journey of going, well, where does imagination land with going into the spirit realm? And that is something I'm still studying, but certainly teaching on. I think we have to be really careful. I think it is one of those areas where if you're not familiar with the dynamics of imagination, that it's a gift from God that you need to steward it, you holy yeah. imagination, clean it up to start with. Yeah. But I don't think you can use your imagination to take you to heaven. Right. I don't really agree. That isn't my experience yeah. um, of, of studying the word or as a person who's trained in imagination, how you'd use it as an artist. And then in the spirit, I, abs I, I believe the way I put it is I believe imagination is the bridge to the unseen realm. So if it's mm -hmm. sanctified, yes, God will touch your imagination to perhaps connect, mm -hmm. but I don't imagine my way to heaven. Right. I don't imagine my way into a vision. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I will open my imagination like I would open my heart when I yeah. come to Jesus in prayer. But what happens yeah. next is completely up to God. Yeah. Yes. I'm not directing the traffic yes. and I don't want to be directing the traffic. But and that that that, that is, makes sense. It, it makes a lot of sense because what a lot of that key is learning. Where does my will take over? Right. This experience. Right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. um, because the, it's not that we don't have a will in the experience because mm -hmm. we're never without our soul, our mind, our will, and right. emotions. Right. But the soul is a really good servant, a really bad master. Okay. Yeah. It's got to be submitted and mm -hmm. being able to be in that place where we so know the presence of mm -hmm. God that we recognize when we've moved beyond his yeah. presence yeah. and we're, we're making something happen. We should be able to feel it and we're sensitive. And if we haven't developed that sensitivity, mm -hmm. we're going to miss it. Mm -hmm. And then bringing this back into our creativity, mm -hmm. it, it's one of those reasons why we can have something that's super creative, and but there's no favor on it. Well, uh, there's a, a really good way for me to put it is, you know, we could say, say we're working in business mm -hmm. and we really want a dynamic business idea. We, we have a heart for God. We want to see God touch it, but we're going after a business idea uh, for a specific area. We're almost saying, God, here's the corner. You know, you, I need something mm. in this corner. And what, what God taught me to do was say, okay, so here's all my training. Here's all the things you've called me to. Yeah, I have a huge to-do list, like lots of other people who lead ministries and have busy lives. It would be great to have a solution. But then he said, now, I see your need, I see your desire, and I see all your training, your skill, your experience, all that. Put that there. We're not parking it. We're just putting it here and come with a complete open heart. Yeah. And he showed me things I would never even have thought to ask for. And they've had so much more favor on them, so much more power. But they've also supernaturally given me skill that I, I never had. And I've been able to impart that to lots of other people and teach that that's possible.
Mm. Yeah. So I think that's the difference is that's, we don't come and tell huge. God what we need or we can say, this is what I need. This is what I'd like. Yeah. But now you show me something I yeah. don't know. That's yeah. one of my favorite things yeah. to ask God. So we don't get to tell God what to do. Exactly. But we can ask him sure. to speak into our moment. Yeah. And, that, and that's so yeah. key. Because mm-hmm. when we miss that, it, it, gets, yeah. it gets ugly. It gets, really it gets ugly and it gets limited and we can be controlling and engineering things even, even slightly, but mm-hmm. we don't realize we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's purity and holiness, isn't it really? Yeah. And it's a journey. It yeah. is. It is. So how about you? The whole creativity, submitting your gift, and allowing God to take you places you never thought you would have gone. Like, what, what does that look like for you? Well, when the two of you were talking, I was, I could go a variety of directions with this thing. And I was like, God, what do you want me to say? And I, this is what I feel. Because I think there's somebody listening that needs to hear this. And that is, I think a lot of people suffer from intimidation and fear Mm. to step into things. Yes. So I was like painfully shy as a child, Mm. painfully shy, very introverted. I was also very, very highly sensitive in the spirit. I was a burden bearing child. And so when you're a child who is very highly sensitive, you, um, you make choices within your heart in order to protect yourself from the things Mm. that you're feeling. And you may not even know that you're making these choices. So you, you, you put up walls of self-protection, you may retreat into yourself and then you grow up and you don't realize that you actually did that. <laughs> so yeah. for me, I didn't recognize until my forties that I had actually retreated as a very young child into myself, put, put up these walls to protect myself. And when God revealed that to me, then I be, that began this huge journey of, of healing and bringing down those walls and coming forward out of those places. But, um, what I did have within me that I believe was a gift of God was a burning passion inside of me to break free. Mm -hmm. I had the creativity of God moving around in me and it needed to get out. Mm -hmm. And I recognized that I had these blockages. I felt Mm -hmm. the blockages and therefore I could go, go to God and ask him, to reveal what those blockages were so I could get the healing so that it, right. it could be released. But so many people are bound up and they are bowing to intimidation and, and to fear and to performance and all yeah. of these things because they're afraid and they are kept from their destiny and their purpose because of that. Mm-hmm. So what I had was I became more afraid of not doing God's will than I was of doing it, if that makes sense. Yeah. I knew that God had something for me to do. I had these barriers, these hurdles that I had to get over, but I was more afraid of not pressing into that yeah. than I was of the fear itself of doing it. And so many people need to get to that point. So they, they, they need that push from God to say, mm-hmm. I am tired of being locked up. I'm tired of being intimidated. I'm tired yeah. of being fearful and I need to get past it. Yeah. And when you do that, he will meet you in that place and bring his strength behind you mm. to be able to release the things that he's put inside of you. Mm. Yeah, that's so good. Would you would you maybe lead people in a prayer just to let go of that fear? Maybe give them some words to, to use? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm throwing her on yeah, the spot. On the spot. <laughs> it'll, it'll work. Well, um, so Father, I just... I come to you on behalf of all of your kids that you have put your DNA into. And yet the enemies have done a good job of, of blocking them and bringing intimidation and fear to lock them up. And I'm asking that you would send your help to these people that you would stir up Mm -hmm. the gifts and the passions within them, that they would have that, that drive to break free that is greater than the fear itself. And so I'm asking for your help. I'm asking for your illumination of the things that have blocked them, the things that the choices their hearts have made to close themselves off or Mm -hmm. to not step into what you have. And I'm asking for courage from heaven to step forward. And I'm asking for the healing that needs to happen for them to be released in everything that you have for them. And I bless that process and every single person that is watching this that needs to hear it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. 
And I think there's, there's even some of you that don't even realize that you have fear that's hindered you from stepping out. Um, you, you just call it your personality, but it, it's actually fear. And I, I want to encourage you just over, over the next 30 days, 30 day challenge. Okay. Over the next 30 days, every day, ask God to show you, Lord, is there any place where fear is keeping me back from stepping into what you have for me? And then as he shows you, you just give it to him. Lord, I'm sorry. I've let fear stop me from what you want. I want what you want more than my fear. And just, just, just do that over 30 days. If you do that every day over 30 days, some of you are going to see such a change in your life. You won't even recognize the person that you become because you'll actually become who you really are um, because you've been locked up from this fear and you don't even realize that it's fear that's holding you back. So that, that's, that's really good. We really need to yeah. get that. Uh, one of the biggest things that, that's kept me back, and, and I still, still fight it. I, I have to fight through this. Is, is I do this, this spoken word thing. When I was a kid, I used to get poetry, and I'd write mm. poetry. And, um, but I didn't, I, did, well, I didn't share it very often. Um, I shared it in a few places, and I had some people critique it. And I stopped right. sharing. Yeah. I, I stopped mm -hmm. sharing it. Um, but the Lord will give me like these spoken word pieces or these creative pieces. Mm. But if I start thinking too much about what people are going to think of it, yeah. right. Right. I, I will, I will hide it. Mm. And I've just, I've just started instead of even trying to, when I feel that I just step back and I'm like, Lord, do you want me to share this right, right. now? Yeah. I don't try to ignore the fear. I don't try to tell myself that I'm not afraid. Mm. I, I just... I just turn my attention mm -hmm. to him. It's like, yeah. Lord, do you want me to share this right now? Mm -hmm. And no matter what I feel, if he says, share it. Exactly. I just share it. I just, yeah, so good. I just, yeah. because I'm, I want, I'm more concerned. I, I really am more concerned about his heart than yeah. anything else yeah. in the world. Yeah. It's the famous saying, isn't it? Face the fear and do it anyway. Yeah. And the fear isn't necessarily... Dread, it doesn't have to be dreadful fear. It can be just your own nerves, your own hesitation, your own, is it good enough? And that's something I try and live by is if, you, if it's God and he's saying, do something, you know, crazy in front of people or anything, you know, just, just face the fear it. and do it anyway. And on the other side of that, there's tremendous breakthrough for us, yes. you know, as people really and also is. helping other people break through. Yeah. Sometimes God has asked me to kneel right up the front of a church and no one else is kneeling many times or mm. you know be the only person that does something but he's often said to me do it to model freedom yeah i've been told that a lot just model yeah. what freedom looks like because if other people in the congregation or the gathering can see you model obedience and freedom it actually encourages them to do the same yeah. and that's a beautiful thing mm. yeah, yeah i love that that's so good mm. that's so good it's amazing the potential if we we really submit whatever gift we have or whatever gift we don't have, mm. if we just submit it to obedience to what the Lord is saying. Yeah. We, we, we don't try to put anything that we hear into the box of what we're familiar yeah. with or what we're what we've learned or what we've known, but we actually give ourselves the freedom to let God lead us and mm. guide us. Yeah the potential for where we can go and, and what God can do is insane. Right. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. I, I, I think, I think that in all spheres, this, the, the enemy really wants to lock this part of us up. Cause that is that thing of this, this whole stepping out into the creative space that God has for every believer in every sphere of society, in all spheres of culture, in all its vast ways that it can come across. Often even it'll come through someone saying, like you said about your poetry, someone saying something or just the, the way that it happens. And we, we sometimes shrug those things off as, oh, you know, maybe it wasn't that good. And the enemy knows how to put people, even sometimes very well-meaning people around us to actually cause a bit of a hurt or an insecurity or I find because I'm a very I'm a very artistic person so sometimes the hardest thing is to play someone 
the new song or show them the painting or read the poem or yeah. if you're going into a new business venture showing telling someone about your new idea because mm -hmm. it's an extension of yourself it's not just a you know whatever you know it's a it's a real piece of you it's a piece of your your heart and your nature and is that funny <laughs> we have a siren. Why you this way? <laughs> we have a siren yeah, no, going on. Um, so yeah, so it's just it's a real vulnerability. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really vulnerable. It's a real siren. Yeah. We're not just hearing We're not it. Hearing it. <laughs> you, you guys are story. hearing it too. Um, but it's really it's a really vulnerable place to be. You yeah. know, you you are revealing something that you have co-created with God. And especially if it is that thing that you've submitted in obedience to him. And there is that little bit of hesitation. It's like, was I on the right track? Did I hear God? Is this good? How are people going to receive it and respond? And you have to push past that place. Yeah, you have to. You have to push yeah. past that place. Because yeah. yeah. if you don't, you'll never do it. Yeah. It'll, you'll stop there. Because sometimes circumstances and the way that things play out, it's the very thing that just kind of tries to reinforce that you were crazy. <laughs> you know, like there's no way that this could have been that you were on the right track, but just stepping out in obedience, pushing past that place, pushing past all of those things, all the reasoning, all the things in your head, all the, and mm. just saying, I really truly believe God told me to do this. Yeah. I really believe it. And I heard it. And just following, following the breath of God in that, in that instance. And yeah. even if, even if it doesn't look quite how you think it should, because that's also the thing. You then step out, you do it, and it's kind of like it looks initially that it's kind of fallen flat mm -hmm. sometimes. Sure. That yeah, doesn't mean something. that you didn't hear God. Exactly. Yes. And oh, that is a great important. learning curve. Because sometimes, you know, in, in people say, you know, if it's God, it'll be perfect. And it'll turn out right. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be amazing. Yeah. And Not there'll be the amazing <laughs> fruit. And it'll, it'll, it'll be the answer to everything. And it doesn't always look that way. No, but it's no. about the perseverance, even in the midst of, okay, but I still heard God. So I'm still going to yeah. forge forward. And that's the thing. It's, it's about pioneering something with mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, I think at the, at this table, I know all of us have had to pioneer things in certain areas and it's a hard, lonely road sometimes. Mm -hmm. But even in all of those things, God is so with you. Absolutely. God is so with you. Mm -hmm. And I've seen the beauty of, of, of true friends. God will always send someone to just encourage mm. you. They'll just come and for them, they don't even know what they're doing, but they'll just come and be like, hey, I really like that poem that you did. Yeah. Or they'll just say, it'll be the one and it'll, and it'll often yeah. be very mm -hmm. subtle. Yeah. But God will encourage you to keep going and just keep on keeping on, you know. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't say that enough. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. can't say that enough. So and true. it's just about... You, know, you have to embrace the yeah. learning curve. Yes. And we have absolutely. to understand that the learning curve is just as much God and mm -hmm. just yes. as valuable exactly. mm -hmm. as the thing that turns out awesome. Uh, yes, you know? that's, that's exactly uh, right. And the tests of God uh, in that yeah. mix, you know, that he might ask you to step out. And actually what I found is you might feel that was not that great. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but on the other side of you, the people, you know, if, if you were just something at the front, actually everybody else's experiences, it was great. <laughs> yeah. But you uh, were being tested. Yes. Were you doing it for, you know, the applause of the, the crowd? Mm -hmm. Or were you actually doing it, uh, you know, for the audience of one? That yeah. famous phrase. And yeah. I think that's a really key test that never, yeah. it's cyclical. In the, yeah, never ends. Mm -hmm. It never ends. Mm -hmm. It's a very important one. Yeah. I mean, that, that that idea that if if we do the right thing, it's going to be amazing the first time, yes. or the first time that we share or share a poem or or share a piece of art mm -hmm. or whatever it is, mm -hmm. that people are going to be like, "Wow, God's all over that." Mm -hmm. But you know, we we've been teaching <laughs> yeah. in the Art of Hearing God course mm -hmm. for over twenty years about in the prophetic you have the called, you have the trained, and then you mm -hmm. have the commissioned. Mm -hmm. Like we realize, wow, God wants me to do this at some point in time in our lives. And, and, and it opens up this path that yeah. we then walk through. And it's this long path of testing and trying and pressing in. And it yes. doesn't seem like there's fruit. And then it seems like there's fruit. And then, yes. then there's not fruit. And then there's fruit. And then there's not fruit. Yeah. And yeah. it's lonely. And then there's people yeah. with us. Oh, yeah. And 
But we, we were given at the beginning, we were given the seed that can end up being this commissioning where God uses the gift that he gave us mm. to impact many, where, where it yes. releases something that, that shifts a, a people yeah. generationally over time. But it's that long path and not giving up. And at any given moment, there's no guarantee that we're going to get to the commission phase just mm. because we're called. It's, it's how, how, yeah. do, how we're going to respond to the training. Yeah. How are we going to respond to the the feedback from someone that everything in us says that this is criticism and I'm not very good at it, but actually yeah. it's the thing that we need to develop the skills so that we can become better. And how are we going to respond when people that we want to give us a platform tell us no, right. and they, they, they don't get it, they don't understand it, they don't have room mm -hmm. for it. And how are we going to understand mm -hmm. when... When we've got two people in our lives that say, wow, it's amazing what God's called you to do. And then we've got a hundred people in our lives. Like, yes. I, don't I, get I, don't, it. I don't know what you're doing, <laughs> but yes. uh, I'll like you. Keep yeah. on going, I guess. Yeah. But, um, it's pilgrim's not progress. Sure. Isn't <laughs> you know? it? It's the road like pilgrim's progress. It's that process. <laughs> yeah. If we give up, mm. we don't get there. Yeah. But it, really I think it was, uh, it was an old Misty Edwards song. and I love it. If you don't quit, you, you win. win. If yeah. you don't quit, you win. Yeah. If you don't quit, you win. Mm. And so that that's that's our, our encouragement. Don't quit. Yeah. Keep going. Press through the fear. Go through the process. Learn what you need to learn. And just keep being faithful to what God has given you. And and when he's ready for there to be fruit, there will be fruit. But obedience doesn't mean it's going to look like what we think yeah. it's going to mean. Yeah. It can look different. It, very much so. Very much so. This, this whole, this need is one of the reasons why I'm so excited with what we're doing for Strange Creative House mm. and the Facebook forum. Because it's a place where people can be encouraged. It's a place where we can share in little bits, whatever whatever platform or lack of platform that yeah. God has given us yeah. that we can get mutual encouragement and, and educate one another and train one another and, and realize that we, we may feel alone in the environment that we're in, but we're, we're not alone. God, so God is calling people all over the world yeah. mm. into this journey to press in for more and, and we can help each other get there. Yeah. I think sure that's can. important. Well, I mean, you've got three nations represented here as it is because yeah. yeah. all over the world, this stuff is bubbling up and yeah. God's building communities with people who are like-minded and have the same heart. And so yeah. it just brings us all together and then we all go home and we do our thing. Yeah. So yeah, it's good. That's so good. <laughs> Ladies, thank you so much thank you for having us. Yeah, I really appreciate your, it was really good. your wisdom and the price that you paid for the journey <laughs> to be able to give something to somebody else to, to help them take the step and not quit too soon. So awesome. Thank you, Joe. Guys, bless you. We'll see you next time on Conversations. <laughs>